Hey everybody, it's Coin Snobs. I'm Keith. I'm Jason. And today we're going to do a box of nickels. Probably. Maybe. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got. No longer sealed. Brand new nickels. Nope. Ah, I can't even see what that is. It's so shiny. There we go. Okay. Yep, definitely not. All right. So, you know the routine. We'll go through them all and uh, bring it back in when we're done. See you in a minute. All right, and here we go. As usual, the quick overview. Starting over here, we have a 1939 plane. And again, just to kind of reiterate it, uh, as usual, me and Keith keep everything 1959 and back. So starting with the 1930s, we have a 1939, and um, that was it. Then we have 1940s. Various mint marks. Most of them... Uh, Philadelphia. In fact, I think this 48 is an S and the rest of them are Philadelphia. So we got four from the 1940s. Then over here with the 1950s. Most of these bad boys are Denver's. Nice little kink in the armor on that bad boy right there. Not a bad little haul. This 1954 is also an S. And then we had one more from the 1950s, 1958. It's a Denver. And then as far as mint states, we got a 1975 Denver. Really nice mint state. A couple full stamps on that bad boy. 1976 mint state. No stamps on that bad boy. Uh, they definitely had to have come from a, probably from a mint set, I would imagine. They were sitting in somebody's drawer for a long time or something. But most likely with the complete lack of toning and I mean they look minty fresh <laughs> quote unquote yeah I know that was stupid um, looks like mint set to me more than likely over here we have one single clashed coin we'll take a look at that real quick all right it's kind of hard to see but just right there to the right of the dome in Monticello you can see a little hint of Jefferson's uh, ponytail and again, clashing occurs when the feeder finger fails to uh, feed a brand new unstruck blank planchet into the chamber to be struck into a coin. And the anvil die, which is the reverse die, is struck or clashed by the hammer die, which is the adverse die. Kind of leaves a little bit of a fade imprint on uh, one another. And you can kind of see a lot of scratches there. That's where the mint worker probably realized the mistake and tried to uh, remove as much of the imprint as possible. But, I mean, you know, not a bad coin. It's not exactly an extreme clash, but it's something weird. So, I mean, you know, me and Keith, we, we're gonna keep it. 1973 Denver. No signs of anything from the reverse die showing up on the obverse, but Either way, very cool. And then over here, we have a really weird looking uh, mint mark. Well, I shouldn't say it's a weird looking mint mark. Uh, 1989 and before, all of the uh, mint marks were struck onto the Master Hub. I believe it was Master Hub or Master Die. Pretty sure it was Master Hub. But anyways, since you have the whole human error factor involved in that, uh, you get some really weird positioning for all the different uh, mint marks. And this one is crazy crooked. Doesn't really mean anything, but you know, I like to show you guys the oddities. Yeah, that is quite the crooked mint mark. And it doesn't really add anything to the value. I mean, I'm sure there's probably at least a dozen people out there somewhere across the country or maybe the world that would collect something like this or specifically seeks them out, maybe more, I don't know. But yeah, not not a whole whole uh, lot of value added to it, but I just wanted to show you guys because it's kind of interesting. And then down here we have a 1942 
This one is a Type 1. 1942 is when they started striking the uh, war nickels. War nickels, of course, they were trying to use nickel for armor plating, for tanks, things like that. For the war efforts, they started putting 35% silver into the nickels. Uh, right around, I'd say, probably halfway through 1942, they gave us a Type 1 and a Type 2 variety. Type 2, of course, being the latter part, uh, was the war nickels. This one, easiest way to tell, of course, you can kind of tell a little bit by the toning that it's a Type 1, but also... It doesn't have the large mint mark above the dome on Monticello right there, so super easy way to ID it. And then we have some Mexican coins, 2007, 2005, couple Canadian coins, 1981 and 1976, couple of Canadian beavers, and then down here we have a 2001S proof coin. Don't find a lot of proof nickels, um, but they're always cool to find. This one's pretty hammered. Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, she has seen much better days. I was actually the one that pulled uh, this coin out of a roll, and I couldn't even tell at first that it was a proof coin. Uh, I mean, you know, at first glance, you can kind of tell that something's weird about it, but yeah, it's it's been circulating for a very, very, very long, long time. Either way, I mean, we're going to keep it. We just don't have the heart to return this back out into the wild. It's it's still a proof coin, so we'll just hold on to it. And this, I want to show you guys under the scope because at first I thought it was a damaged coin, but honestly, looking at it, I don't think it's damaged. I think that it's just a really, really bad strike from a really, really worn die pair. I don't know. I, uh, let's Let's take a look at it and see what you guys think. Yeah, what, uh, what's going on here? I mean, at first, it, with the naked eye, it looked like damage. But honestly, under the scope, it looks like just a really, really, really old, really worn die pair with all of that metal flow. I mean, it looks like waves, but I've never seen one this extreme, ever. I mean, not even close. This is crazy. Up here, it's... Okay, but it just looks like really excessive wear on both the obverse and the reverse of this coin. I don't know, what do you guys think? Throw it down in the bottom there in the comments if you think this is just some kind of weird damage or if this is wear. I mean, I've seen acid damage on coins before, including nickels. That doesn't look like this. Uh, I've, you know, obviously we've seen plenty of street coins where they've been dropped in the street and then ran over a hundred or million times or whatever. This doesn't look like anything but extremely excessive die wear. And of course this important one right here. 1936 Plain Buffalo. We're gonna call this one the Bell of the Ball. Heck yeah, man. And we find Buffalo Nickels every once in a great while uh, in uh, our nickel rolls. But this one's actually in really good shape. Uh, usually they're completely dateless. This one has a full horn. Yeah, look at that thing. I mean, it's by no means mint state, but again, 90% of the time you can't see anything, not even a ghost of the date when we find a buffalo nickel in rolls. And I mean, it's rare that we find buffalo nickels anyways in a roll. But this is... This is a pretty dang good looking coin. And I really like the uh, I really like the toning. That rust color. And yeah, I mean that would be close to, if not a full horn, so that's a pretty good looking buffalo nickel. But anyways guys, that is it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Best way to support the channel. Totally free. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it just shows YouTube that people are actually interested in watching our stuff. Throw it a like if you like the video. Tick the bell at the bottom so you get a notification every time we do upload a video. Until next time, love you all. God bless. We'll see you soon. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody.